This is Infection, the survival podcast recorded live on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, episode 335. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. My name is Nick Craig. You can follow me on various social media platforms by visiting my website, nickcraig.net. You can find social media links there. And if you want to check out my daily uh, job rantings in the wonderful world of talk radio, you can do so at nickcraig.com. Our website, of course, is infectionpodcast.com, and this week's episode is going to be very heavy on the videos, as E3 was this past weekend, so love to have you alongside on our website, infectionpodcast.com, as well. Joining me as he does, a bit of a uh, trailer whiplash from all of the uh, all of the videos, <laughs> um, Brian with an eye, Aldrich. Hello, Brian. How are you? Hello. Uh, hey, I'm doing good. So uh, first of all, let's get this out of the way. If you want to find me at Brian Aldridge on Parlor or, Gla- or Gab, or you can go to my blog, biteoftech.com. As Nick said, just go to infectionpodcast.com. Uh, join our Discord server. See that in the upper right-hand side. Uh, and you can submit news topics to the news channel, and that helps us out a lot. Uh, we also have a Steam group, which sometimes works. Not today for some reason, but uh, you hopefully you get notifications. Uh, you can always try it out. And then we have our video forms of the podcast. So if you go through Twitch, YouTube, uh, bit shoot or d live um, you can watch those live or you can watch uh, recordings after the fact on most of those and then we have uh, our podcast extras which has some of our pre and post shows for those that always watch the recordings and miss some of those live presentations we did get a few of those uh, pre and post shows in there and then our audio only forms lower right hand side all the different links for whatever platform web-based uh, mobile everything's in there so just click those find the one that suits you the best uh, and then you're more than welcome to follow along with the show notes and if you click on the particular episode you're going to listen to or watch uh, there is a whole set of links there's players everything to be able to follow along in that episode uh, and we've had those for every single episode that we've released um, also you can support us if you go to infectionpodcast.com forward slash support or you can go to amazon.infectionpodcast.com humble.infectionpodcast.com and we have our subscribe star and then prime gaming subs which i'm sure you'll hear uh, if you listen to the show long enough, popping up at the oddest of times. Yes, sir. As always. Um, <laughs> well, it's, what's going on with you, Brian? We're uh, in the midst of uh, midst of the summer. Um, what's yes. going on in your world? So, well, we've been uh, we've been swimming at a, we have a pool here in the subdivision. So I've been taking the boys and my wife and going out there and swimming. Taught our five year old to swim like in a couple days, oh, and now cool. we can swim across the whole pool. He takes breaths, like lifts his head up, takes breaths halfway. <laughs> So he's doing a really good job. Yeah, it's like, well, first we thought he was choking because he comes up, he's like, <laughs> he's like you know, dog paddling like crazy. And then I'm like, dude, I, uh, is he like getting ready to sink? Is he just trying to sit? No, he's just like taking a breath and then he goes back under and keeps swimming. So kind of figured out what he does. That's but that's been a lot of fun. <laughs> but that's that's what he does. He's got some lake, like uh, like a paddle board, you know, for where you stand up on. Oh, yeah. Paddle board a, a lot of fun. Yeah, we got a lake that's a mi- like two miles away from the house. I mean, nice. it's, it's like two miles, literally, for me to drive to a lake. So um, I figured, why not? So we're going to start doing that. Just a lot of kind of getting ready for summer because, you know, yeah. kids are out of school. Um, just trying to make the most of the weekends and, and everything. You still work so, from home? That, that's pretty much been my week. Yeah, still working from home. I have no idea when I'm supposed to go back to work. And I'm full-time for another client, you know, because they pretty much rent me out. Um, and so I'm... I, I don't know. They There's haven't. No reason been, yeah, even, client though. hasn't been There's talking no. about on site even. Yeah, so it's all they're yeah. all remote. I don't even know when we're ever, if ever, going to go back in the office full time. There you go. Well, I've uh, which I'm I'm fine with. I don't mind. Like, hey, let's do three days a week. Let's go in two days a week. You know. Yeah, I've, you can uh, work home. Been working on my tan here. Been hitting the beach. Looking uh, looking pretty good on the tan. The camera doesn't do it justice, <laughs> but I've had m- multiple people like, "Damn, you're tan." I'm like, "Hey." Uh, hey. I'm like a J- Johnny Bravo. Hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, working on uh, working on that. Living here at the coast, still uh, waking up at the ass crack of dawn and to uh, yep. to work, and then uh, spending my afternoons napping at the beach, which is uh, a good problem to have. So that's uh, yeah, 
Well, that works. That's what's going and on. You've, you've adjusted to the whole wake up early and still get something done in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. My days are incredibly productive. I just like Good. today. I s- s- t- laid down around three thirty, woke up around six, so I got a nice little two and a half hour nap in. And then, uh, well, and that's the thing most people don't realize. That's like a better work in your work done earlier. You have more of daylight. You get home, you get daylight yep. to actually do stuff. Yeah, yeah. So went so, to the beach with a couple nice. friends this afternoon. Came back, and uh, and here we are. As uh, very good. The night time. The night time is here. <laughs> Well, I've been going. Oh, and I have my hockey starts tonight. So the season finally starts. Excellent. Um, so that's good. That's something I'm looking forward to. Well, today's show, we've got a lot of videos. Uh, a lot E3 of E3 happened. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the only conferences that have actually happened, you know, to even online that really made us, us anything come out. So I think this is a, this is going to be one of the main ones that happens. And there's been a ton of announcements, a lot of things that I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I'm not following all these, some of these things very closely, but things I wasn't expecting announcements of uh, follow-up games that I wasn't uh, sequels that I wasn't expecting. So a lot of cool stuff in today's show. So hopefully people enjoy that. But if you are listening, I encourage you to go to our website and uh, watch some of those videos after the fact, if you can't do it now, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with E3 or do you want to cover some news or do you want to go back and forth? What is your thoughts? Um, No, let's go and start with a little bit of non E3 uh, and then we can kind of step into the videos after that point. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of, interesting things or things that we've been uh touching through okay. the uh, through the, the weeks and months that i think are good follow-ups and kind of ending some of the stories well let's uh, then let's start off with cyberpunk 2077 brian reports are that it is going to be available on the playstation network store next week not sure yeah, it was if... it was taken off because of Correct. the bugs so, so so sony pulled it because they said it was too buggy for their um it was six months ago that, that they pulled it off saying it was too buggy and so it's now it's going off. back on. Yeah. So, um, so now it's going, it's going back on and, uh, and we'll see. I'm there. A bunch of bugs were fixed. Uh, you know, the time that I played it, it was never super unstable, but of course I wasn't playing it on the lowest model of Xbox or PlayStation possible. But I think now it's in it definitely in a stable enough state to where they're not going to be demanding to, to pull it off again. I think, and they put out another update in the last couple of weeks, fixing a lot of these bugs as well. So I think, I think they're getting in a good spot, but I still don't think it's anywhere near what they promised or kind of hinted at Uh, when they were before release. I would presume that whatever version is going to go live back on the PlayStation store will be probably pretty heavily tested by Sony because it, what it really did is reflect poorly on them. That they're, you know, you, you got that they let system. it go to the store. <laughs> yeah, and pass I mean, their, it, honestly, their quality yes. assurance program, hundred yes. percent. Um, and I mean, I understand in the, the yeah, you know, the heat of the moment, not wanting to tell CD Projekt Red, hey, your game is not sufficient for our store, but yeah. in result, they've had to issue a bunch of refunds. They've gotten bad press out of it, um, and over, I mean, it's just been a bad situation for both parties. So I'm glad that. You know, I'm glad that it's coming back, but realistically, yeah. Sony should probably should have just held it from the beginning and said, "Hey, this game is just not ready to hit the store." Um, yeah, and I don't, and I don't know. I mean, it, the thing is, it was such a big anticipated title. You know, who at at Sony is going to stand up and say, "All right, you know, we're not letting this supposedly AAA yeah. product <laughs> release when you could go to the store and find a bunch of smaller little projects that aren't very well done." But you know what? Um, I, how do, how do you judge that? How do you say okay, this really small project can have bugs in it, uh, but you know we're not going to let you release this AAA supposed to AAA. I just they, they almost have to come up with a tiered set of criteria for if you consider yourself AAA or maybe want to sell at this price, you have to meet this set of qualifications on down to the guy who's selling his game for a dollar or maybe uh, is free to play because he can't sell it. You know that guy, you can't hold to the same expectations as a CD Projekt Red. So I, I think that that's probably what kind of caused them an issue. Is in there they have to have those rules loose enough for uh, for small developers that don't have that stable of a game or that great of a game to still let them release something. Um, but you know when it comes to CD Projekt Red, when they release at that level, then all of a sudden this happens. Yeah. So um, not sure exactly when it will be back on the store, but Sony and CD Projekt Red have both confirmed that it will be available for a full it will be fully returned to the store next week so uh, we'll have details on that probably either next week or the week after as to how that's going all right um and then 
So one thing I wanted to, to point out was Icarus. I don't know. Icarus was supposed to be free to play. You remember this is the one that's by what James Hall or is is it James Hall? Yes, uh, yes. from yeah. from Daisy that they're releasing this Icarus game, and then here I'm seeing that it's actually quite a bit of money because initially they said free to play, and now they're selling what is like something like a, a ninety dollar or a hundred dollar uh, pre order version, deluxe version. Well, I assume like other games, I could be wrong. It the the pre-purchase is $30, but then when it comes out, it will be free. I could be, I could no. Be so, that. okay. So the, the standard edition is now twenty nine ninety five. The deluxe edition is ninety nine ninety five. dollars hmm. And it, in what you get in the deluxe editions, you get some, an Arctic biome outpost, a forest biome outpost, DLC chapters, um, a suit that, yeah, an Enviro suit, and then the game. So you're getting a you're, and you're you get an XP boost for buying it for pre-ordering pre it. You get a a ten percent discount and an XP boost. Well, I was going to say for all intents and purposes, you're pre-ordering the DLCs. That's why it's so expensive. But we don't yeah. even know that this game is well, going to no, make it. Still, well, you're getting and you're getting you're getting uh, two. It says two biomes outposts so two types of biomes um and then yeah these dlcs i, I don't know it's just it seems like it seems lot. like it's just a regular game now they're just charging it like a regular game they they dropped the free to play but and it's releasing uh august 11th so they can do pre-orders now it's just like a regular game now i'm just surprised that i didn't hear a big uproar when they went from free to play to charging $30 for the base game and then the $100 for for, for the deluxe edition for, for deluxe which gives you biomes uh, what well, you're is the first, so I, I was mean, saying you're i was saying you're essentially pre-ordering dlc but that that indicates that the game has to do well enough that they actually follow through and make the and DLC actually and it's make actually a, a follow-up dlc it's pretty yeah, yeah. not okay, just so one but two here okay so here's here's a uh here's what an outpost is because this is i want to make sure like what how is this worth money an outpost is a one kilometer by one kilometer plot of land where you can do just about everything you normally would do in our original game mode, but without the threat of storm and enemy AI. You can zen out, test your architecture and crafting skills, and invite your friends to come and play with you. So you're buying biomes that ha are have a kind of like a free for all mode, you know, a creative mode. You're buying all you're doing is buying two biomes. You're getting two biomes that you can do creative mode in. Uh, uh, this just seems kind of uh, odd. Why would why are you paying for that? If you're if it's no longer a free to play game, if it was a free to play game. Charge for each biome, right? Or make it a create create a crazy amount to make them earn it. But why are you now buying something that's treat, being acting like a, a free to play model? You're buying out biomes which have no impact on the regular game. It just seems yeah, really strange to me. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what is going on here but I, I i can't seem to um so well if yeah, you're it's, it's like a place where you can create your own out. little house and stuff i mean you can create a house there it's like a it's it's like a, a little private area and it just seems odd that that's in the deluxe and it's so expensive and it's so expensive for those things i mean those are that's cool but why are we paying for that that should be in the game it's just it's it's weird so that's icarus i thought i'd mention it because i hadn't heard any of this at all until i saw this announcement um and here we are <laughs> so I, it, it maybe and maybe ph is pointing out maybe it's private servers that could be what it is maybe this because it has to it's letting other people come and join you so it could be some sort of an instance private server that that you're paying that kind of deluxe fee to have access to similar to fallout 76 yeah, yeah, so kind of the same concept. That just seems like maybe that's where we're going. But if that's what it is, label it clearly so they know, okay, this is costing us money to host these for you. Not just, oh, we're going to give you access to this biome, you know, for your little playground. It just seems, it doesn't seem like a good deal. Um, so, well, there you go. If you're interested in it, you can uh, check it out. It's called Icarus. Uh, it's on the Steam store. You can also find links to it on our website, infectionpodcast.com. Um, and there's a an opinion piece in here from PC Gamer t 
titled originally a free to play game, Icarus will now have a hundred dollar deluxe edition. Um, hmm. so yeah, there you go. And that, then this is Dean Hall, which kind of tells me unless it blows people out of the water, I just being that I heard so little about uproar about them even doing that. I just, that sends a signal to me that this is not a highly anticipated game because people were really watching this. I would have heard an uproar about them taking it from free to play to being $30 minimum. Yeah, maybe people just don't care because people don't know about it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it, it's survival. So I, it could be that it's enough of a niche thing that it just doesn't. You want to know really the best part that worked up. So yeah. that, th that thing was called outpost. Is that what you said that you were paying for? Yes. Yep. Outpost. I want to read you a direct quote from Mr. Uh, well, not from Dean Hall, Dean but Hall. from Rocket, Rocket Works, which is all intents and purposes mm -hmm. him. Quote, we are still investigating how Outpost mode will work exactly, so we've only confirmed the details for the Deluxe Edition. It doesn't even seem that oh, they so, understand. So they is. don't even know exactly what they're going to do in it, so they're just throwing it in the Deluxe. So they don't have to deal with it till it sells. Correct. Because, I mean, that's a Deluxe feature. Deluxe feature. You know, we don't yeah. talk about that. Yeah, that's what it <laughs> that sounds like. like. Sounds like they're making excuses. Okay, I have a perfect follow up for that then. Yeah, because, let's do it. All right, so let's talk really quickly. Now, this was announced at E3 this year, but this is a follow up to a game that was released by uh, some old, uh, some devs from. Let's see, this was old. Uh, these are guys that did the fall. These are guys that did Fallout. Fallout. Yeah, these are all full, all Fallout, all old Fallout devs, right? Yeah. Obsidian so they released Outer World. Yeah, Outer Worlds, um, and now they've announced a second one. And I want to play this video really quick because it perfectly summarizes most of the videos that we see from AAA Studios. Is this the trailer that we're looking at? Yes. Yep, okay. this is the trailer. All right, let's take a look at the Outer Worlds 2 trailer. We begin by hearing an old, wise-sounding voice. And we see a quiet, peaceful setting. This will make our game seem big and important <laughs> now something must break the oh that's just the first time it's like oh, perfect will this creature be in the game no say goodbye to it forever suddenly and for no reason people running <laughs> these pointless slow motion shots make everything seem cool and should bolster pre-sale numbers that wah sound can mean only one thing. We must gaze over an epic shot of a world. And there should be lens flares. Now we see our hero. But only their silhouette, because the developers haven't finished the design. <laughs> or finished the story. Or finished any gameplay that's actually ready to show. In fact, the only thing they have finished is the title. So for people that don't remember what Outer Worlds 1 was, it is, for all intents and it's it's kind of a humor, it's... It's kind of like a Fallout game. Um, yeah. I've heard a lot of great things about it, but because I'm a lazy bastard, have never played it. Um, but they're and I have played through part of it, so it I can say it's it's it it's didn't hold my interest comedy, quite a bit. Right? But if, it's yeah, it's it's but there's a lot of humor. I mean, if I probably at the it was when I played it. I think it was during my divorce that I was trying to play it, and so I just I was like, ah, that is not it. I'm not gonna play this. Ha <laughs> ha, funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I pre I'm just being honest that I like I can't give it the I exact review. It's just at the so time, it did have humor, but I wasn't laughing during the game. So I just kind of put it down for now because it's got a lot of just kind of humor like that to where I just wasn't picking it up. You know, I mean, I was seeing that it was supposed to be funny, but it wasn't at the time. Q laugh track. So, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I, I just, so I did start playing it. It did have you know good mechanics and seemed kind of interesting. It wasn't like a game that you're going to be like, that's the top game of the year, but it wasn't bad. So um, I, I think, and this one will be Game Pass Day 1. So if you have Game that. Pass, yeah, and they have the original one, Game Pass 2. So as this well. is their... So if, 
I believe Microsoft owns Obsidian, the developer. They, I think they bought them, right? They purchased them, didn't they? Or let's see, Obsidian uh, Microsoft. Let's see. Obsidian Entertainment. Yeah, in 2018, they got purchased by Microsoft. There we go. So, so, um, so, yeah, it, so makes, that, it makes, makes sense, sense that it's a, a Game Pass game. And I think and some of the things, were, because I don't think oh. they were purchased by, they weren't owned by them originally, was they? Were they? No, they were not. Or, this I mean, is also but the how long? But was it since the release, though? No, Outer Worlds came out when in 2019. When did the game come out? 2019. Okay. They've owned it since 2018. But uh, Obsidian Entertainment is also making Grounded, the game that, the kind of the uh, Bugs Life um, yes. style yep. arc game. So that's, that's My kids love cool. that game. It is actually quite a bit of fun. It's still in development. You know, there's yeah. areas where mm-hmm. it's blocked off and they're still working on it. Uh, but it's fairly simple. And it's, you know, it's it's kind of like ARC for kids. I mean, and adults can play it and enjoy it too, but it's simplified enough and they have modes to simplify it to where you can run around and just do stuff. And our five-year-old runs around it and does stuff. Doesn't accomplish all the goals because he can't read, but, you know, he, he gets enough done. So it's a simple game, but it's still a lot of fun. So I figured that Outer World, it's announced, as you can tell, they, there's very little details. They don't have the exact release date, uh, but I figured people would appreciate that because that's a lot of the ones that we see up to this point. Yeah, for sure. All right, all right. Um, let's uh, let's move on really quick. Well, since we're talking about the Game Pass, do you want to talk about that really quick? Yeah. What do we have on Game Pass? All right. First of all, uh, they've there there was an announcement that 27 games. Or actually, this was just when you would look at the games, 27 games are coming day one on game pass for PC, which is a pretty big deal. Uh, you know, this is com- big competition. I would say to steam because a lot of these ones are ones that they would purchase on steam. If they're already on the game pass, why would you pers- purchase it on PC at all? Um, so this is, uh, this is, is going to be, I think a big impact at that point, but they've got all these games day one. Cause they're getting ready to, you know, officially launch the game pass for PC and have all these in there. So, uh, and then there's a lot of them that are going to be released after this. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, new game, The Ascent, Hades, 12 Minutes. Uh, some some of these games that we're going to be talking about uh, that were un- had their dates announced and everything are going to be Game Pass Day 1 as well. The so, fact, Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite, the fact that that is going to be available, which is the first Halo game in a hot minute. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, flight simulator when it comes to the Xbox will be available. Oh yeah, on Game and that Pass, thing, which is huge. and that thing is is just amazing. Watching what they've been doing, they they didn't. I didn't put it in the show notes, but they even announced a uh, Top Gun add on that's going to be free for the flight simulator. So you can do you fly in a jet and do uh, jet fights. Yeah, pretty, pretty cool. And because it's so realistic in those, I mean, it looks in the controls. I used to play when I was uh, when I was in junior high. I think it was. I played Microsoft Flight Simulator because that's when they really released some of the first ones that actually looked okay. Have you seen the original Microsoft Flight Simulator? Well, I probably played it. When did it release? I mean, the it wasn't. I didn't play one. anything like DOS or, or crazy, but it was it was the '90s that I played the, this. The original Microsoft the Flight Simulator literally looked like it. Yeah, I don't, yeah. The, this is the original Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, let's bit, see. It, I'll it, tell it, you if this it, is the. It, it, okay, I have played that one. I have <laughs> played that one. I had that one. I used to play it, and I loved it. It was fun. I mean, now that was the, graphics, I did upgrade past that, that, and it was a little bit better. The fact that all the gauges are there and everything like that mm-hmm. was for its time very, very high. Time. I was able to get into a plane and actually fly it, land it, and take it off based on because I used to play so much Flight Simulator. I knew enough of the controls on the plane I was in to where I was able to do that without having to ask where the things were. You're talking about a real plane. A real plane, yes. That's pretty scary. So I mean, so and I was in, I was in like in junior high or high school. I was in probably early high school at that point when I flew. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this uh, it's incredible what they can do, and they will teach you how to fly a plane if you actually pay attention to what the dials are and what they're doing, and just not just clicking things out of memory. Um, yeah, yeah. But this, yeah, when that gets on there, I'm looking forward to that. That must be worth getting a yoke for. And I did see a really cool yoke that has all the sync things built in a little lcd screens in it that they're An that Xbox they sell yoke made for the yoke. flight simulator it's made for the flight simulator yeah but, but so i think xbox it would work on xbox as well okay. i'd have to look but I, I i i'm pretty sure it would work on their xbox as well so gotcha cool but yeah so that's cool i mean there's a lot of good stuff coming and then also here's the thing that really i think this you know kind of what you're seeing there 
along with this announcement, they've confirmed that Game Pass streaming is coming to TVs and standalone devices. Now, what's that mean? Stadia-like devices, <laughs> little hardware devices like your uh, Roku. All they have to do is make a little, uh, make an, um, an app for the Roku. Now that's different hardware that may be more, more or less difficult, but they're doing streaming, so they could do it. It's not running anything on the actual device. It's purely streaming like a movie app would. Um, and, you know, and then having controls going back to give it response. And so this is going to be huge. I mean, people are not buying these games. So Stadia, what chance does Stadia have? Because Stadia had to buy so many games out of the gate. <laughs> Um, you had to buy a hardware device that they're barely, you know, letting you use it on their own Android devices, you know, their, uh, their, their devices that they release. And so here that uh, Microsoft is the one who has the reach and the influence to be able to get it probably you know, on every single streaming, you know, hardware device that you can possibly get it on. And so this is going to be huge getting it to where you can just hook up a controller to your TV, hook up a controller. people who don't, who have no clue what, um, you know, what, uh, what anything about consoles and all this, this brings gaming to their living room without having to go out and actually really buy anything. It may be a controller. All they have to do is try to push out controllers that connect to those. So I think this is pretty cool. So we will see. Very cool. And this is uh, an iteration of what used to be called Project X Cloud. I think this is going to be the mm -hmm. next iteration of, of that. So yes, yep. Microsoft, full on power play. They have... I don't know. I think I said this probably back a couple months ago, but I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly who is leading micro or the Xbox side of Microsoft right now, but it is clear to me that they have probably a five to 10 year vision of Microsoft yep. with Xbox. And they put in the legwork over the past, you know, five years or so to get it to this point. And now it's just, bombshell after bombshell after bombshell them owning bethesda having full access to all of those games in that library um you know which includes id software and doom is just part of it and th yep. they're just rocking and rolling um no question about it there yep. i just i don't see how i i know i already said this but i'll say it again because I, I i want to um i don't see how sony is going to even begin to comprehend compete competing with them it, it, it well just, and, and during it, the it conference make any sense. the head of the head of microsoft was talking smacked against sony about hey how's your pc releases going <laughs> you know yeah like because yeah. microsoft just is tossing out pc releases like crazy yeah making it to where everything is practically free you know half the stuff that they they have is free on on pc uh or you know part of a subscription service so it's it's yeah. just a night and day difference but you know another one now uh another one could release uh that's in that vein of of uh studios is starfield they made an announcement this is a Which huge is game that we've known very little about other than a a little graphic of a little starship that's out in the middle of space um that's all i've seen about this game but they've been starting to actually talk about it more and more uh and todd howard i think he said that you know this is the most advanced thing that they've done this is the first game that they're going to be releasing on this engine Sorry. so um this is a this is a big thing and also, he's saying this is the most hardcore game that Bethesda is releasing, has released up to this point. So, do, do we, we got a video of this. It's, yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's play the uh, the teaser trailer, and then okay. uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Where's Fallout 76? <laughs> Not bragging about that one yet. They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you found, it's the key to unlocking everything. We reach your Constellation. The 
this is all we've been working towards. Everything else looks good. We've come to the beginning of humanity's final journey. Prepare for departure. Graviton loop array full check. Your space lane is clear. That's why we're here. Main engines go. Ignition. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch. I'm going to be honest, cool trailer, but really kind of leaves us in the same situation we were in, in which we know nothing about the game, nothing about what you're going to be doing. Uh, but the, I assume that the 11, 11, 22 display indicates it's the release it's going to be date yep. coming out November 11th, 2000, November 11th. Yep. Yeah, so <laughs> a year and a half ish. Yeah. Roughly. And so. Firebomb says, "Isn't this game 14 years in the making?" Yes, yeah, something like that. That's what they've claimed. They well, they said 10 in there in the video there. They I saw a thing. I think it said 10 years in the making. So they've been making it for 10 years. Well, it better be the it better be uh, you know. And here's the thing: when they say making the game for 10 years, that means that they've been in the pro they have not been developing. They've probably the making game the for engine 10 years. for 10 years. Or you know, they probably it. started the development of the engine or something yeah, because well, that engine. The this is the first time this engine has been used. Yeah, they started the process of storyboarding the game and planning it. Uh, so, you know, uh, kind of a little misleading. It makes you think, oh my god, they've been developing this game for ten years. Well, not really. It's probably been probably since the launch of Fallout seventy six. Have they really been kind of going hard on it? So a couple of years. Which yeah, and this you know, is, is what you would expect and. One thing it does kind of show you is, I guess, the art style a little bit. Uh, you know, because you never know how realistic or how cartoonish, how much like uh, Fallout it's going to look like. You know, it still has kind of that Fallout look of the way the the screen is and that kind of coloring and everything, but it it is more updated. Um, I there's not, as you said, not a ton of information, no actual gameplay. It's all cutscene. It looks like one cutscene from the beginning of the game, most likely, Pretty is all you're seeing. So, uh, but this is coming November 11th, 2022. Uh, and then we'll kind of track it because this is the first time they've actually opened the can a little bit and give you a hint of what's in there. Um, yep. But it's going to be exclusively initially on Xbox Series X and S and then PC. So, and that'll be on Game Pass day one. So that's a, one more thing, one more thing for the Game Pass. Money, money, money. That's what money will do, my friend. Yep. Uh, they do have, by the way, they do have uh, a Discord server for it um, and some other things. And yep. You can go, you and can, we have links if you log to in, the website and everything. Yep. So if you log into your Bethesda account, you can, they say, join the Constellation. Uh, just a new, it's an, essentially a news uh, letter. And PH is obviously PlayStation isn't getting the Bethesda games. You know, here's the thing I don't think they won't get the Bethesda games. I just don't think you're going to see them right away. Because, I mean, honestly, right away, yeah. Microsoft, I, I'm not sure that. Here, obviously, Xbox wants to win, but at the end of the day, they can make millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of dollars in sales on Sony. It's just it won't be available day one. It might come out a year later on the PlayStation. Yep. Um, I would, I would be shocked if these games never came out on cross-platform because there's a lot of money. Yeah, I, I don't care. Uh, to me. Having it for the first year on your platform, that's when a game really kind of is, you know, for all intents and purposes, the lifeline of the game. Um, yeah. Most people, I mean, most, I mean, you can make the argument three months. So I would presume that these will come to Sony and PlayStation in the future, just not for definitely for sure, not right away. Because there is a bunch yeah. of money to be made there. Yeah. And this. We'll see. I mean, this this will be interesting to see if this is really the kind of game because they're kind of pushing as an RPG game. Yeah, I've um, got a lot of PTSD. I, yeah, and, and you know they're saying that it's like Skyrim, but in space, and you know a little bit more hardcore. What's that mean? 
I mean, I can't even imagine what <laughs> what that means. So, is it going to be a full one to one replication, kind of like what we've seen in in Elite Dangerous and No Man's Sky, where it's just a huge, or is this going to be a more limited space experience? They've been working on it for ten years. There's no excuse to have something not to have something huge. Um, but I know we got a year and a half to uh, to find out, and I'm sure they'll start leaking out more and more inf information as we go. All right. Do you have a preference on uh, on which one we cover after this? Yes, I do. I would like okay. to, and before we talk about this, yes, I want to say for the record, EA and Battlefield are really good with their trailers. So take yes. that for what it's worth as we watch <laughs> this Battlefield yep. trailer. The trailer looks freaking incredible. I'm very excited for the game. But, but again, before that, I just want to indicate I understand that this is a trailer. They're very good at trailers. Yeah. But but I do think it leads us in the right direction. Battlefield games typically don't yeah. suck. I mean, they're 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 very high quality games. Even if they're not your cup of tea, they typically don't um they don't typically fall short. I mean, they've got a long track record with mm -hmm. Battlefield games. Um so let's take a look at the Battlefield 2042 official game picture. There was a teaser that got released last Thursday after the show, and then at yeah. E3 they released the gameplay trailer. So there's no point of showing you the teaser. We'll just show you the actual gameplay yeah. trailer. So let's uh, let's take a look at that. Incoming fire! Attention all squads! The Russian troops are falling back. Do whatever you can to secure the sector. And some of this is gameplay. We push them back, but not far enough. Should yeah, I mean, this looks like what the map. Yeah, this looks like actual gameplay. I, I would say that's not totally a cutscene. No. I think this is a pretty good representation of what the game will look like right here. It is. Unfortunately, it's very scripted, which makes it tough, but yeah. this is all actual game. I think it Talk looks about input freaking overload. Sick. Yeah, I think <laughs> it looks so much sick. stuff going on. 128 player. It, it said at the beginning of that trailer, captured with 128, um, in you know, 128 players captured live in game with mm -hmm. up to 128 players. Um, just showing the sheer, um, uh, you know, 
mass size of Chaos. the game. Firebomb cheering <laughs> the, the show, saying, I played this game when I was 17. I think I'm good. No need to go back. Um, the, what this this is one of, this is the first time that Battlefield is jumping into the future. Typically, Battlefield yeah. is current era or prior. You know, I mean, times. they had modern warfare, right? Or well, know, they, they'll do modern. Type yeah, of things. like Battlefield but, Four was was a yeah. modern modern era games, but mm-hmm. they've never gone futuristic, yeah. and it's not too far futuristic. Um, Twenty forty two. Um, but this oh, says is, they did, Melmo says they did a twenty one forty five. I never played. I never played that. Don't remember. Wasn't there one? Of, remember the one where you did? What was the one where you did? Like you had jumps. You could do extended jumps and all that. Wasn't that future? The battle, were, no, that was a battle, battlefield. That was uh, Battlefield twenty one forty five came out two thousand six. So that's a different era of futuristic games. Uh, yeah, twenty one forty five was like a mech game. Um, yeah. So so yeah, but uh, nevertheless, this is a this is a modern take at a futuristic shooter. And you can see by the graphics and things like that. Some of the things I find interesting about it, um, is the dynamic weather system, which looks pretty cool. Or I, know. I, was, I knew you were going to bring up that tornado because that tornado yeah. looks like a huge weather event it, that you have the ability to interact with. I think that's the difference which between is, old, yes. old games because old games, you could see that weather event over there, but you could never get to it. So they'd make something that went like this and you'd look at it and say, Oh, that's a big weather event happening. This one and what they're able to do now, since technology is getting better, you fly into that weather event. Like you're you're getting sh- shaken and everything else. So I think that's a big difference. That's a big, pretty good tech, and that shows you as they update those engines, the kind of things that they're able to accomplish. So it, so that's a big thing. Obviously, building destruction has been a thing in Battlefield for a while. That's only going to get better as technology gets better. I'm I will be buying this. I will be buying this day one when it comes out. Unfortunately, my 1070 is going to be crying like a baby as it's uh, just pushed to its limits to probably play the game on medium. Um, but I will be buying yeah. this day one. This looks freaking awesome. Big fan of first person shooters. I don't shy away from that at all. And uh, it looks great. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited for it. It's about, and, and at the end of the day, it's a battlefield game. You know what you're getting. You're getting a first person shooter. Yep. So that, yep. that's where it's. It, and it's be, it's going to be consistently that you know if you look at all of them, there's some mechanics that just carry through every single time, you know, with a little bit different look or a little bit different of a weapon, but it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. All right. For sure. Uh, let Let's talk about a game that is going to be released here in about a month. Um, okay. And it's what we've talked about. You know, they you can actually go buy it and play the early release. And we've talked about uh, they're coming close to a, a final release. But that's Chernobylite. Um, and they did a release date date trailer here that they just did. Um, so let's play that. It's coming out July 28th. So here, just uh, just a little over a month. And uh, it, it looks like a really interesting game. We've seen some trailers, but here's the latest. How do I enter that power plant? We need intel, backup, supplies, and most of all, we need a fucking plan. Looks like our next step when the time is right. For today, let's focus on getting our strength back. Somewhere to sleep would be a start. I'm only really interested in one thing. Where is Tatiana? That ghost you're chasing. I don't know what to tell you. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. Sniper, are you in position? Affirmative. I took the roof of an abandoned building with a pretty little view of the entire power plant. Igor, take a rad reading, will you? 3.6. Not great. Not terrible. So, there's a Chernobylite. We've showed and talked a good chunk about yep. that game. But it is actually coming so out. So it'll be July, again. what, July 28th, did it say? I think it was yes. July 28th. Um, and to note, PS4 and Xbox One is what it says. Don't don't know mm-hmm. that that doesn't mean, because they're not going to do, obviously, a. Uh, I mean, it'll run release. on the newer ones, but it's just not going to be, it's not going to be optimized. Will for it? The, will, is that. It, so it will. It will run the, on the newer. The yeah, stores it runs on the new hardware. It's not optimized. Yeah. I gotcha. It's just not okay. optimized. Yep. 
So, so these games run, uh, but you know, they, they, the, once they get to the point where they optimize them and put in all the features that take advantage of the new hardware, then they'll put the XS on there, gotcha. uh, at least for okay. Xbox. Uh, and so, so that's game- coming out July 28th, uh, it, single player game. Keep that in mind. Even though you saw other people running the scene, those are NPCs. Yes. A, think, about it, a, think about it like Firewatch when you're thinking about this kind of game. It is a, except it's a little bit more open world in that respect. But think of a um, think of a Firewatch story based game, a little bit more open world, but not something mm-hmm. that you are going to play for sixty hours. In all likelihood, it yep. will likely be maybe an eight, ten, maybe twelve hours, depending on how much you can explore in the world. And that's that, which is yep. which is fine. I mean, again, I, I as, as long as it's good. Yeah, and and you look at the price point of the game. The game's thirty bucks, which is not. Um, not unrealistic. I think Firewatch was thirty dollars, yep. and that was a four-hour game. So, depending on how well they do the game, the voice acting sounds pretty good. Haven't played it, but I'll tell you this: if you look at its reviews on Steam, Brian, very positive in its recent yes. reviews. Eighty-eight percent of one hundred and sixty-nine yep. recent reviews are positive, and that's overall, through the alpha phase. That's yes. the crazy part. That's through alpha. And overall, 76% of almost 3,000 reviews are positive, giving it a mostly positive rating. And yes, the big point to note, while it was in early access, which I am going yep. to get this and play this once it is released. I don't want to play it in early access. Yeah, and that's what I that was my whole thing too, is it looks really interesting, but I've made that mistake of We Happy Few playing it too much in the alpha to where I can't get myself to sit through the final release. Uh, because I played through that su- stupid story mode up to that point five times, and I just don't want to do it again. Um, so I, don't, you know, I didn't want to do that. So for some of these games, I want to wait for them to release so that I can get that final experience. Now we have someone who mentioned a game that is actually one that we can talk about next called Atomic Heart, uh, and this one is an action uh, RPG. It's an open world game. Uh, I hadn't heard anything about this before uh, before E3. But uh, let's go ahead and let's go and play that video really quick so people can see what that is. Copyright strike on the channel. Don't copyright strike me. Please don't copyright strike our channel. This is my song of songs. Do, 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 ba, ba, do, is this your copyright strike song? <laughs> yep. This is my song. YouTube, do not listen to the words of my song. Don't know what in the fuck is happening in this game at all. Pure insanity. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my song, and welcome back to the program. <laughs> that's a that's atomic art. Um, okay, so just to give you an idea what's happening there, it says a global system failure happens at a Soviet facility that leads machinery to rebel against the people. Ah. Said, uh, so you're you're pretty much fighting against a world of machinery that is uh, fighting trying to destroy you. So that is atomic heart. It looks the graphics look pretty good. Maybe a little um, bit like a. Like- um, I'm trying to think, what game are you fighting back against? I'm kind of like Portal a little bit, in the result of like the the little yeah. NPCs are kind of always after you and things like that. Not a, not in, not in terms of it being a puzzle game. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's it's. Just, I mean, it's, it looks interesting. It's a little bit wacky, um, but this is going to be released. They haven't put the. I don't think they put a date on this one yet. This one, no yeah, date, this one's no going to be to be determined. But we will see. It's a Russian, as Melba says, the Russian gaming company. Uh, interesting song for a uh, a trailer. I, but hey, this is in Russia. This is maybe what's hit music over there, and they're they're good with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, did you want to? Is do you want to talk about? I mean, do you want to talk about your one yes. of your favorite games here, really quick? So, Halo Infinite. I'm a big big Halo fan. Um, there's two different videos available for this. Um, okay. one is ca- kind of like a weird campaign trailer, which is all right. I, I don't particularly care for it. Um, so what I'm going to show is the trailer that they at one of the trailers that they actually released, 
which was their multiplayer okay. trailer, which is kind of, uh, for a lot of people, uh, the selling point of Halo. Great story, but in its longevity, it's multiplayer. So let's take a look at the uh, official Halo Infinite multiplayer reveal trailer that came out at E3 this past week. A new day is upon us. A new generation built to fight. Together, we are unstoppable. Are you ready? Interesting, they note that yeah. the multiplayer will be free to play. So, that yeah, I guess that could be a good thing. Play I mean, one. what do you think as far as is this only going to be on console or is this no, going to be no, also says, on? Is it going to be PC as well? It says Xbox Series S slash X Xbox One, which is bleh. Windows 10 PC, meaning it will probably be in, okay. the, in the Windows Store, store which is fine. Um, mm -hmm. and then Xbox cloud gaming and it's holiday 2021. Now it doesn't say that those will all be out at the same time, but I presume that no. they, they're going to be, cause it's going to be a game pass day one title. Um, interesting in, in terms of deconstruction of it, um, looks like it's got a lot of your typical halo game modes. Saw a lot of capture the flag in there. Some of the headhunter and some of the other different, uh, uh, game modes, Old vehicles are back. The Banshee. I saw the Wraith was was in there at one point. Of course, the uh, classic Warthog. Um, looks looks good. I mean, th there's a lot of games th that you're just kind of waiting for yep. the next generation, and there has not been a Halo game since. Five. Well, and my wife, five was my wife really likes Halo. Yeah, so do I. And she played. She played a lot of it, and I never really played it because I didn't have an Xbox. You know, I always had a, like I had PlayStation, and before that, Nintendos and things like that. Um, and so I never really got into Halo. So, and I played the old ones, and it's just a little too clunky for me to really get into. I, you know, it's kind of like some of the old games that I really have good memories of and loved playing, but then I try to go back and play them now, and it's like, oh, this is this is unbearable. Uh, you know, I think so. Maybe a modern one for me will help get me into it, to where I don't feel like it's so clunky and the graphics well, here's aren't the so thing. bad. Back in its day, the Halo Three multiplayer was arguably some of the best video gaming that existed. Um, it, it, Probably that and like Quake, and you know, kind of like along that realm. Yeah, console. very much like that. It, the just Halo Three multiplayer was so unique, and at the time when it came out, I mean, the Halo Three multiplayer was a Halo 3 was a launch title for the Xbox 360. You're talking 2006 or 7. And what it was able to do with its multiplayer back now, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of years ago, back in, ago. 
2006, you're talking about a completely different era of Xbox Live. Um, it was very, very ahead of its time. And for a long time, I, I, I would make the argument some of the best multiplayer gaming I've ever had has taken yeah. place in Halo 3. And that trailer, which was not in engine, was very stylized, was very rendered. Yeah. Well, actually, excuse me, I shouldn't say it wasn't in engine. It was likely in engine. It wasn't a gameplay trailer. Um, very stylized. But if, in fact, this is a back to the basics, capture the flag, regular team death match, some other different game modes, this could be a huge success for Microsoft. Yep. Halo 5 was a total flop. Nobody cares about it. Reach kind of sucked. Um, Halo has just not had a couple of good releases the master chief collection is what they've been working yeah. on that's all of the games that they're re-releasing i've got that on steam um but halo has been in a lull now for call it six or seven years and the halo infinite multiplayer could be that return um yeah didn't see anything that indicated battle royale but i wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of br mode in there that's kind of the flavor of the month but um, overall, looks great. Very excited to see that. And I, mean, I think the free-to-play to multiplayer is a good idea, though, too, because it keeps the lobbies full. I mean, that's it the does thing keep is, the lobbies full. Um, over the it, years, as it goes, you will have people that will just play it because you know it's a game they always play and it's free. And yes. I think that's going to be what kind of keeps it going. You know, so you don't have 10, 20 people in the lobby five years from now. Yeah, or so, ten years from now. Looking forward to that. Um, it's out this year. It'll be out holiday season this year. So between Battlefield. Between Halo Infinite, a new nope. Call of Duty, presumably. Seems like they're finally catching up from COVID. <laughs> sounds, like I'm so gonna have to, uh, sounds like I'm going to have to start playing video games again. I need a freaking video card. Yeah, uh, it's, well, and that's not, that's a whole other beast that's a big I problem I mean, right literally, now, getting all hardware. Of these, all these games are going to be out. I'm gonna, I mean, again, you look, at this, you look at the graphics that we just saw in Battlefield. You're going to look at a game like Halo. Uh, you're not going to be able to play. Well, it might be crap. an opportunity to test the uh, streaming mode. <laughs> I mean, you can just do the no, Game Pass streaming. No, no, and, uh, I will not, play it on I will not be doing that. Or on your I phone. Not, no, I will not be doing that. Um, All right. I do, I do need to get myself a GPU. So that's where uh, that's where we stand. All right. Well, I mean, we're really close to our time. Is there anything else you wanted to touch, touch on before we uh, closed out? Um, no. I uh, think we are. Uh, we're good. So right, I do want to, well, hey, yes, uh, but before we do get out of here, sorry, I do want to mention there are a bunch of E3 games that we didn't get to. We'll get to those next week. We kept track of which ones we covered and which ones we didn't. Um, so we'll get to those. Uh, we'll get to those next week. And actually, I do want to cover this just because it will probably not be relevant next week. Here's an article over at PC Gamer. Um, Five Night at Freddy's creator won't apologize for Trump support. <laughs> Scott Cawthorn, yeah. who is the creator, says he's ready to be canceled for financial contributions to the Republican candidate, including Donald Trump. Um, so he frankly just doesn't care. Um, you know, for well, people that, on Twitter. This is the thing. You, you look at this. The guy just has a different opinion than you. And yet you go after him like it's a big issue. Um, half the world has a different. Well, probably more than half the world. I'd say. 99% of the world has a different opinion of you than you. And so I just, it just frustrates me when people freak out just because someone supports uh, the same person, you know, the 50% of the rest of the country supported. Yeah. And by the way, you can look up all this stuff because uh, federal election law requires you to, um, to uh, Register. disclose your, disclose your donors. So uh, some of this stuff came out. I mean, it, they say it leaked, but it didn't really leak. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty stupid that they're trying to out people, you know, that donated to anything politically. Yeah, he it's gave just, a bunch it's, of it's money. So stupid. He gave a bunch of money to Republicans, including Devin Nunes, Mitch McConnell, Ben Carson. Gave uh, a bunch to this. Sounds like a conservative. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much what he is. He's not Republican. a dangerous person. No, he's not a dangerous person at all. Um, so of course trying to uh trying to attack him and uh and uh, so there you go and say i mean this is kind of the same thing they, and they mentioned this article same thing happened to the guy who made minecraft uh Mark oh, Notch. Notch, yeah 
he he's a conservative or, or you know he's he's not even a conservative like this guy is he's just he just doesn't think how other people think he needs he's supposed to think he has his own opinions and people would just get after him all the time you know and he sold that and made 2.5 billion and now you see him he says i don't care what your opinion is i don't have to <laughs> you know if, if you all he's fun, he's funny to follow on twitter if i still had twitter yes so uh you know, of course, PC Gamer says, notes, there's no indication of any cancellation. We'll just go look at the Twitter replies to them calling this guy out for, you know, being a bigot and a racist and all of these uh, buzzwords that we like to throw uh, at people that we that we disagree with. So, yes, refund the game now. Get your money back. This guy is a bastard for having a political ideology and a belief system that you don't agree with. So, yeah, there you go. So, and it's just the guy who he doesn't hide his beliefs. It's sad. Well, actually, he does hide his beliefs. He he makes a it makes a donation. It's 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 not like you're, um, you can't hide a donation. I mean, it's 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 public data. Yeah. Well, but I mean, from what I've seen, this guy, you know, he's he doesn't hide who he is. He just he's just who he is, right? Yeah. I think most most people in this industry have to hide who they are. I think most there's many more people than you would think that actually think more like this guy uh but you know what why would they say it because look what happens look at this kind well, of stuff why and why it, do you think i didn't want to go down into that industry and go down to california personally i, well, I had it, no interest in it if in fact he wasn't if in fact he was a um a a a liberal and on the left he would be you know he would be harrowed if he was pushing his political agenda in his video game and on social media but if, if yep. but from all indications, I can't see anything than where he pushes his ideology in the games publicly yep. on social media, nothing at all. So it's literally what he does in his private life. And instead of shoving it down people's throats like the left does, um, he doesn't. And but still not still not good enough. So. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Well, yeah, yeah. There's so much you could say. I'm just going to leave it there <laughs> well, yes. so we can be on Twitch another day. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, if you want to, if you want to find me, you can find me at Brian Aldridge on Gab and Parlor, or if you go to my blog, biteoftech.com. Also, we've got infectionpodcast.com. Just jump on the right hand side of that and uh, join our server on Discord. If you do that, I encourage you to submit news topics um, in our news channel. That really helps with the show. Uh, and there's other channels. We've got a bunch of ARC servers. Uh, we're up to nine ARC servers now with the latest. Uh, Genesis 2 that they released. Uh, we also have our Steam group, which sometimes gives notifications when the show, sh- show starts. Uh, we have our video forms of the podcast, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, and, or sorry, not Mixer, <laughs> Live and BitChute. <laughs> and uh, and some of the, most of those are, are live and, uh, and you can get watch the recordings after the fact as well. We have our podcast extras for the pre and post show. And then uh, the audio forms. So go to the lower hand side, whatever platform you're using, uh, you can go click it and listen. If you are listening, I encourage you to go to our show notes, click the particular episode. This will be 335. And then you can follow along. We have a lot of videos in this one. So uh, you could, when we say that we're going to restart that video, you click play and you can follow along as we're doing it. If you happen to be sitting at a computer. Um, and uh, we have all the other links to the show in there. And uh, if you want to support us, go to infectionpodcast.com forward slash support. Uh, and then we have amazon.infectionpodcast.com, humble.infectionpodcast.com. Uh, Prime Gaming subs and our uh, subscribe star. So I think that's it. I do want to thank our friend Firebomb for uh, throwing a few bits at us here throughout the program. Thank you very much, Firebomb. I greatly appreciate it. And again, if you are a uh, audio listener, uh, one of the things that we do, if you've never watched the video on YouTube, is there is uh, uh, a YouTube on the scroll bar now. You can see the different segments of the program. So you can just go through and uh, and look at that. And Brian, as we're getting off the air right now, I'm receiving a phone call from uh, our good friend Lance Gunter. Must not understand oh, yes. that we're uh, that we're uh, that we're doing the program. So we'll uh, hopefully catch up with our buddy Lance and uh, figure all of that stuff out. Um, well, uh, the, Brian, thank you as always. Greatly appreciated. Yeah, um, we'll uh, cover the rest of the the E3 stuff next week. If there's a game that you want to make sure we cover, send us something in the uh, old Discordio throughout the week. And uh, we'll we'll get to it next week. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. My name is Nick Craig. You can check me out 
6 a.m. tomorrow morning, nickcraig.com. If you missed any portion of the program, you can visit our website, show notes, links, all of those trailers, all that fun stuff's on our website. It's infectionpodcast.com. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.